<laughs> All right. Welcome to Life Extension Live. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Dr. Mike, and that is? Dr. Crystal. Dr. Crystal, do you know what one of the most trending nutrients, plant sources on Google sphere out there right now? What is it? Sea moss. Sea moss. Yes. All right, there it is. You guys into sea moss? Let us know what you think. Um, this is all over the place now. Yeah, I know a few people that are, and I personally wanted to do this show uh, to to get to the bottom of it. I, yeah. I understand that there are many nutrients that can be found in sea yeah. moss, and people are making sea moss gels and using Doing all it kinds of stuff. All, all it's sorts on of TikTok. <laughs> Hannah does that stuff. She's probably on TikTok with. Sea moss gels, who knows? But here's the thing. We're, we're going to talk, is it really worth the hype? And I'm going to give you a quick answer. Is sea moss worth the hype? Are you ready? Okay. Yes. Oh, okay. I was nervous. No, <laughs> because sea moss is just a form of seaweed. seaweed. And we already have tons of research on seaweed um, for many health benefits. So absolutely, we should jump. I think we should be eating um, more, I'm going to say it this way. Sea vegetables. I know. No one thinks of it as vegetables. They're veggies. Sea veggies, right? Sea veggies instead of land veggies. We don't we don't eat a lot. And we're, I think we got some stats coming up on how much we eat and stuff like that. So, yes, sea moss is for real. It should be trending because it's a seaweed. So, on today's show, we're going to talk a little bit about sea moss. Um, well, first, seaweed. We're going to start yeah. there. Mm -hmm. And then we'll get into some specifics about sea moss and really focus in on benefits and, um, you know, the potential for, for, for health and even longevity, right? So let's start with um, what is sea moss, right? There's some, there's some specific things we wanted to share, right? Yeah, well, it's just, a, again, it's a form of seaweed. It's a red seaweed, also known as Irish moss. So and when you're That's looking right. at the research for sea moss, what we found, and just for all of you to know, is sometimes the research will list it as Irish moss. Sometimes, often, more than often, the research will be listed as the scientific name, which is Chondrus crisps. Chondrus <laughs> crispus. Chondrus, that sounds like Christmas. Yeah, so it's you know because it's a species of the of uh, the red seaweed, the Irish yeah. moss. So uh, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. So very interesting stuff. Uh, let's let's back up and first talk about seaweed. Why? Are, so because I you know I, I made it very clear. Yeah. See, the trend is real mm -hmm. because simply it's a seaweed. So let's talk about benefits of seaweed. Um, I have a I have a list mm -hmm. of. Um, nutrients well established to be found in seaweed. You yeah. want me? Should I just run through it? I think we can. We can run through the list, and and then I do have some commentary. <laughs> protein, more protein than your land veggies. There's your so commentary. You think about <laughs> yeah. that's yeah. When you think about people who are vegetarian and vegan, and they're trying to kind of fill some of the protein the protein gaps. Yeah, you know, not as much as your meat. But certainly, it's more, a good source. It's, yeah, a, good it's source. a good source. And nowadays, we need more sources of protein. Yeah, I mean, you guys, it takes a it takes a, a lot of work, a lot of effort from people and the environment to raise animals, right? It's becoming an issue. Well, and we're we're not treating our soil the way that we should. Right. So we have an abundance of nutrients in the ocean that we can tap into. So protein, right? Yeah. Protein. Um, you're gonna like this one. Fiber. Of course, polysaccharides. Sea, sea vegetable. It's going to have some fiber. Um, there's uh, an important carotenoid call, called fucoxanthin. Yes. Um, very, very powerful antioxidant for you. Here's just a list of all the minerals you can get from a serving of seaweed. You ready? Calcium, iron, magnesium, iodine, phosphorus, potassium, zinc, copper, manganese, selenium, and fluoride. Whew. That's a lot. That's some healthy stuff. And of course, omega-3 fatty acids. Absolutely. Uh, you find Loaded those in, in seaweed as well. Polyphenols, tons of vitamins. So it is, it's a whole nutrient. Yeah, very good. Um, you you want to know the, the vitamins you can get? <laughs> Name them all, Dr. Mike. Hey, B1, B2, B9, B12, C, D, E, K. <laughs> Pretty good, right? So yes, yeah, seaweed, seaweed, it's a, it's a veggie. I think it's a superfood. It's a, it's a, it's all that a, good chlorophyll. Yeah, 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's another one we didn't even really say I know. here. We didn't yeah. talk about that. Yeah. Are we, I think that's coming up. So, yeah. So just in general, what are we trying to say? Seaweed is healthy. But we're not eating enough. Oh, my gosh. Not even close to, to some other countries. Right. Yeah. Um, I have it right here. Okay. You ready? This was a 2019 survey. Japanese men and women consume approximately nine grams of seaweed per day Mm -hmm. compared to, what do you think, compared to Americans? Zero grams. Zero grams. So, I mean, maybe we get a little bit when we order sushi. Yeah. A little um, but that's about it, right? Right. So, and there are all of these beneficial nutrients that that we can get from sea vegetables. It's just another form of veggies that should be on your plate, but Americans are missing out. Yeah, and, and I think some of it might be um, it's it's an acquired taste, maybe a little bit, right? It's it has a, it has, no seaweed does have or sea vegetables they have a distinct flavor to them, I think. Um, but you just little maybe maybe just introducing your diet little by little. You know, and eventually you'll get you'll you'll acquire mm-hmm. that taste, and you'll want more. So you're you not want, you're not agreeing with me. I'm not. I mean, I'm I'm the inclined to prefer kind of that uh, the salty, savory unami oh, that's good. flavors. You're making me hungry. That's what you get from sea vegetables yeah. from your seaweed That's and, and so i i personally enjoy it okay all it's right quiet for me okay all right there you go everybody's everybody's a little different and that's okay so let's talk about how seaweed is kind of categorized mm-hmm. right which is still kind of confusing because it may fall into one category but look different anyways let's um there's three basic um cuddlers mm-hmm. to, to how we break down or categorize seaweed right yeah. the first one is red Tell us about that. Yeah, one. your red seaweed, usually smaller vegetables. Again, oh, there it sea is. moss is a type of red seaweed. Uh, nori, that's one that most people are familiar with. That's commonly used in Japanese preparation. Oh, seaweed chips. That's my daughter's favorite. So you use the, the nori with sushi. Now, before you go on, before snacks. you go on, see, but it, nori, once it comes out of the ocean and is, is processed, turns green. Right. So, so a lot of people would think nori is a green seaweed. It's not. It's a red. It's a red seaweed. Right. Yep. And what's and what really makes the difference between these reds and these colors is just different levels of, of uh, polyphenols, yeah. carotenoids, which are these colored pigmented antioxidants. That's, That's right, all it right. is, right? And yeah. then there, are in, it also depends on the preparation. Uh, just like I'll give you an example, broccoli. When you when you start steaming broccoli, there's that perfect point where that broccoli almost turns luminescent yeah. green. And yeah, it does, and it changes. Yeah. The same thing happens with your sea vegetables. Apparently, red seaweed fronds are the s- most similar to land lettuce. Hmm. So maybe start there if you like lettuce. Start there. Make make a maybe maybe do a little bit of land lettuce. And a little red seaweed lettuce. Try it, right? Yeah. You would just go all in for the whole thing would be well, red. I'll tell you what I do. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's go to number two. Um, so that was red. No, brown is the second way to catch it. Yeah, that's the largest, usually large in size. Kelp, uh, bladder rack, I think that's what you're seeing on the screen. Uh, but these are things that you see uh, or that you eat in your seaweed salads, the wakami species oh, of kelp kombu kombu oh, that's, yep. that's the wakami but kombu if you like ramen do you like ramen oh, I love ramen Mike? yeah and you know there's those kind of strips of seaweed oh, that's so sometimes good. in the ramen that's kombu oh i love that's it that's a type of brown see i like that i, that, I well. can eat a lot of that you have the base for more dashi broths and ramen soups so many different uh species of brown that you see more often uh in uh, Asian preparations. Yeah. The what you saw there in those first pictures was bladder rack. That actually has a lot of research behind it, with many health benefits, even longevity benefits. We think, mm-hmm. yeah. So very good for you. The third category um, is going to be green. Yeah. So green, you're not really going to see it that often. Yeah. On your plate, it's weird. It's weird because you think you are seeing a lot of green, but remember, most of the green you're seeing on your plates are either red or brown. Mm-hmm. Everybody get that? No. <laughs> Most of the green that you see in your salads and on your plate 
are from the red and brown categories, not the green. Mm -hmm. Now, there is one interesting one. I think we have a picture of it. This is green um, sea grapes. Look at that. Beautiful. Apparently, they put them on um, salads and stuff like that, and maybe even ice cream. Hmm. It, it, when they use it in ice cream, um, they call it green caviar. Nice. Look at that. That I'm looks so good. I'm not sure about the ice cream. <laughs> I, I, I try people it. Like, people put peanuts, salted peanuts yeah, on true. top of yeah, ice cream. Yeah, so okay. kind of that sweet, salty flavor. Okay. I think that goes together. And then, of course, um, Corella is another form of green. And um, Corella, very very healthy, very a, de a mm -hmm. detoxing type of agent when you consume mm -hmm. it. It comes in supplement forms as yep. well, right? Okay. So there you go. Red, brown, green. Yeah. And remember, most of what we're consuming is from the red and brown. And just one note about that chlorella. So that is microalgae. Most of what we've been talking about with your seaweed is called, these are macroalgae. You can yeah. see the seaweed, yeah. you know, on your shoreline. Um, and the chlorella is micro. And these are not the same. The microalgae, these are kind of those, uh, those red algae, the blooms that, can, that's yeah. messing up our, um, our that's ecosystem. Different. That's the micro. Totally, yeah, different. totally different. That's not what we're referring to. I, yeah, I think if we back up a little bit, right? You, I, I guess the first place you would start when categorizing seaweed would be micro, macro. Right. Microalgae, mm. macroalgae. As you said, we're mostly focusing on the macro algae right yes. um and then from there the macro is red brown green that's kind of exactly. how um how you can break that down so i you know i want to i want to move into some so why why is it trending um uh there's a lot of um information on the internet out there about the health benefits uh, so we kind of wanted to talk a little bit about some of those key compounds mm -hmm. that you find in seaweed that we can actually look at good research with. Right? We do. And note that these key compounds vary based on the species, based on whether it's red or brown, if they're big or small, uh, based on where they're naturally grown, that natural habitat. Yeah. Uh, the, the water, is it cold water? Is the water uh, more salty? What's the nutritional composition in that water? Lot, is yeah. the water clean? Is it clear? Is it, you know, heavy, less likely to have heavy metals? Those are all kind of things Important that things. you want to consider when you're sourcing your seaweed. Let's start with something called fucoidin. Or how do you say it? Fucoidin. Fu that's, fucoidin, that's right? Um, tell us about why, well, I know you like it it's a fiber. It's a fiber. It's a polysaccharide fiber, but it's one where we have research with immune system. Yeah. Supporting the immune system, lots of, uh, of data, um, evidence of anti-tumor, of course, antioxidant. They, they all have antioxidant. Uh, anti -vi there's antiviral evidence with fucoidins. Yes. Uh, and so we, we like it that uh, it's shown to support bone health, help to support uh, blood flow in the body, and and of course, it's a fiber. You know, so it, it can support GI health too. It's one of those compounds where you have to think to yourself, okay, so Japanese people eat about nine grams a day of, of, of seaweed. They're getting they're getting a pretty decent amount of fucoid, mm -hmm. right? And they live really long lives. You, it's where this is where you start thinking, are we we are missing out? as Americans, right? There's something here. Now, is it definitive that you're gonna live longer if you eat a lot of seaweed? No, but you can make that association with some of those countries, uh, specifically Japan. There's a couple islands in, uh, in Japan where they have the oldest people all the time. That's right. I think, it, I think this is important. I think so. I mean, you're right. It's a, the, these associations are certainly there and you have to question what are we doing here? Yeah. Why are we why are we depleting our soils and our natural resources when we have these nutrients available from the ocean? So it's really about diversifying yeah. your your plate. It's it's it'll it's going to take a paradigm shift in how we think about food, right? In this country, we 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 just don't if it's if it's shellfish and fish that kind of, fine. But there's the, the most abundant thing in the ocean is mm -hmm. the sea vegetables. Yeah. 
So we really got to start thinking different mm -hmm. about how we're going to get the protein, how we're going to get the fiber. Diversifying that um, I think is a great way of saying that. Um, let's go move to iodine. Essential nutrient for your thyroid, loaded in, in seaweed. It is trace mineral, um, and we know that 30% of the world is at risk of iodine deficiency due to the amounts of the low amounts of iodine found in your food. So your seafood uh, and your sea vegetables, mm -hmm. those are going to be your best sources of iodine. Yeah, we have, well, we have here too, right? This was from Food and Nutrition Research, uh, March 2021. Brown algae, especially kelp. Mm -hmm. contains the highest amounts of iodine. Yeah. Um, red algae, in this case, actually, and, and Irish moss, has the lowest. So if you're looking at sea moss as a trend, great. But if it's because you're interested in iodine, you probably want to switch your trend to kelp. There you have it. Right? Yes, right? yes. Um, and again, so while, still good. Yeah, it's still good. Again, because these are just like with land vegetables. Mm -hmm. Based on where they're grown, the species, all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff, mm -hmm. you're going to get different benefits, health benefits. Yes. Um, and so I, I would say, again, diversify. Don't just focus on the one type of seaweed. Yeah. Now, some people, um, you know, when they think of iodine um, or if I'm, if I'm going to eat more um, seaweed, can I get too much iodine? Is that going to become a problem? Well, just remember the Japanese eat nine grams of seaweed a day and they're not having overt iodine ex ex they excess are. issues. They are. And the just to give you, put it into perspective here, um, the Japanese Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare has established a safe upper limit of three milligrams of iodine For, yeah. per day. The U.S. This, this is a lot. This is, is crazy, right? A thousand, about eleven $1 hundred. Yeah. So, so there's room. You got room to eat you seaweed. You have a little bit of room. You got to room have to. You, you got room to, to to eat seaweed there. Okay. Um, another key compound, fucoxanthin. Yeah. This one's had a lot of recent research. It has for cardiometabolic health. Uh, fucoxanthin, as Dr. Mike mentioned, it's a carotenoid. I think you mentioned yeah. that at the beginning of the show. Uh, and so this is just a family of pigments similar, similar to like beta carotene is a type of carotenoid. And we know zeaxanthin and, and lutein. Uh, and so this is found primarily in the brown the seaweed. The brown seaweed group, yeah. I started, so when we, um, you know, so an issue that's becoming more and more prevalent in this country is what's called non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, mm -hmm. right? Um, and and it's, it's because of diet, really. Lack of exercise, lots of sugars, that kind of stuff, you know, stuff you hear all the time. It just engorges your liver and it can't function right. Um, and then based on a study, and I have the study right here, mm -hmm. I started recommending um, fucoxanthin and even just more seaweed uh, to, uh, you know, uh, patients and friends that I knew had fatty liver disease. Mm. Yeah. You want me to go through the study? So randomized double-blind trial. Um, this was in non-diabetic women who had... The fatty liver disease, non-alcoholic okay. fatty liver disease. Um, and they found that when they consumed the brown seaweed um, with, they, it, they confirmed it had a good amount of fucoxanthin in it, okay. right? Um, that there was a reduction in body weight, body fat, liver fat content, meaning the liver shrinking, getting rid of that gore engorgement. Wow. Um, triglycerides came down and C-reactive protein, in, an inflammatory marker came down. Wow. That's with seaweed, brown seaweed, fucoxanthin, fucoxanthin yeah. at the same time, fucoxanthin. <laughs> so that I do think is a, is a great one for a lot of Americans. Yeah, so those are some of the key nutrients, of course, the, the list that Dr. Mike mentioned with the minerals <laughs> and the vitamins and everything else. But these are some of those key components, the fucoidins. The fucoxanthin. Yeah, yeah. And You're getting a whole bunch here with, yes, you with are. sea and vegetables. Yes, you are. iodine as well. Right. So let's move now more specifically to sea moss because that is that is the, what's, what's trendy. trendy. That's what's on uh, mm -hmm. Google and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, so again, just to remind everybody, it's let me, I gotta remember, it's a red algae. Yes. So also known as Irish moss. Irish moss. Remember, you got red, brown, green. Mm -hmm. This is falling in mm -hmm. uh, to the red um, tell us a little bit what you found out. Yeah, so the the claim to fame is, of course, everything else that we've talked about with the with the seaweed in general, the iodine and the fucoidins, but sea moss has carrageenan. 
And that makes CMOS a little unique where the, the preparation can, you can have fun with CMOS. You can make <laughs> gels, you can make puddings, you can make- Ice cream. Ice cream. Yeah. Use it for popsicles. Uh, and that's true. because of that carotene. It's a thickening which is agent. A, yes, yeah. it's a type of of polysaccharide you, that's found just specifically in that sea moss. Yeah, they add it to commercial ice cream. They have for years. Um, and a lot of people, you know, they, they don't like it. They think it's bad for you. I've never had a problem with it. It's just a thickener. It's natural and it's from sea veggies. I'm fine with it. <laughs> yes. Another good thing uh, or kind of a factoid about sea moss is the calcium. More oh, calcium is that here? We got than that? milk. Oh. Higher concentration of calcium than milk. I didn't know that. And there of you course, go. you're getting iodine, as we mentioned before. You're getting the fiber prebiotic. Uh, so that's going to support uh, gut health and help to feed I, your good bacteria. Prediction. Uh-oh. <laughs> the finger. Make sure you get the finger Prediction. In, the, in the camera. <laughs> I got to get my right camera. For 2025, maybe. Sea moss milk. <laughs> Think about it. It has calcium and all these minerals and what? And it has the carrageenan. We can you we can use it to make a milk. I don't know. It's sea moss milk. Sea moss used as a thickener. This is my prediction. It's going to be. I don't know about that, but uh, you know he has a right to have his predictions. I've been right before with some. <laughs> Come on now. All right. Um, and then it has prebiotics. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, that's going to be good for your gut and all that kind of stuff. That's so, right. Um, yeah, listen, CMOS, it's, it should be trending at the end of the day. Check it out. Um, what I mean, Overall, like, what does all that mean for my body? All this kind of stuff. Um, better thyroid function. Better bowels. Anything else you want to add to yeah. this? <laughs> better, better immune system, better cardiometabolic health, uh, and so I think it's you're getting. It's just a, a concentrated source. This is how I look at it: a concentrated source of nutrition that people aren't getting. You think about your plate. I just, you just looked Italian there. I don't know what you were doing. I don't know. I don't really know. But our plate is just, it's another way for us to get veggies and get diversification trace minerals. Yeah, I think that's the great. The iodine, the selenium, the All zinc, right. the copper. I have in my hand, okay. right here, claims that you can find online about sea moss. And we're going to ask, are they real? Or are they not real? Okay. Are you ready? All right. Ready. Claim number one. And tell us, what have you heard about sea moss in the chat? Claim number one. <laughs> Does sea moss detox your body? Dr. Crystal, go. Well, short answer, it could. Yes, it <laughs> contains detoxification enzymes, one in particular, glutathione transferase. We don't have any readily available hardcore clinical research showing that. But when you think about if it contains fiber, Fiber is part help. of that, that detox process. Yeah, detox. Here's the problem with the question. Detox can mean a lot of things. And it's, you know, to, just to say to something detox, that's really not the correct way to ask right. the question. Yeah. You want to you want to say things like, does this help my liver? Does this help my bowels? You know, th that's detox stuff. Does this help my kidneys? Yeah. Because those are the organs of detox. detox. Right? Yeah. Lungs, too, don't forget. Lungs oh, also no. involved in detoxification. All right, you ready? Claim okay. number two. You ready? Okay. Does sea moss clear your bowels? I think if you eat enough of it. But I, well, I, I think <laughs> here's another, here's, I think what people are, here's my opinion. I think people who are asking this, okay. they're thinking more about like bowel detox. A laxative. A laxative effect. effect. Maybe. Because that's what, what clear, they're thinking of. Clear, clear my bowels. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I don't think there's any evidence for that. No, we're not seeing anything with sea moss as being kind of a, a bowel laxative clearer. <laughs> right. But it, it may help um, the fucoidin that we discussed mm -hmm. um, can help to bulk up. Um, your bowel. So if it's you're a having, soluble if, fiber. If you're having loose stools, maybe it helps there. But as I think for what they're asking, no. Yeah. I don't think that that's, that's true there. Um, claim number three. Does CMOS help 
<laughs> with hair growth. Now, I have to tell you this, Dr. Mike. I have two feelings on this. One is that, short answer, we're not seeing it in the research, but no research doesn't mean that it, doesn't it can't work. be helpful. There's it anecdotal means, evidence. Right? It just means that we need to study it a little bit more so we can confidently say proven to support well, hair growth. But the other part to that, Dr. Mike, someone who is dealing with thyroid issues. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, that's, yeah, good point that's here. That's like a whole nother side way to maybe look at someone who needs thyroid support. They're lacking in iodine. Now they're eating more of these sea vegetables or sea moss. That can help. They're getting more iodine. Yeah. We're ramping up the thyroid and maybe you will see less of your hair Yeah, yeah. What, out. One of the com most common symptoms with low thyroid is hair loss. Right. Um, so I think that and then I think we I think this is fine to say that there, there may be a connection because we already know, for instance, certain forms of vitamin E, tocopherols, tocotrienols, um, which are found in sea, um, mm -hmm. seaweed, have been shown to help um, with hair. So so, again, we don't have definitive answers. Yeah. We don't really have any studies to point to. But hey, give it a shot. See what happens. OK. Um, claim number four. This is this what this is more of like a like a like they put it in question form. Mm -hmm. But if I'm going to make it a claim, I would say sea moss is good for cognition. What do you think? Well, again, it's <laughs> a <situation. laughs> well, you know, I, I I don't want to be the bearer of bad news. Maybe promising data. We're seeing research in roundworms, a couple of studies in roundworms that uh, Round that sea moss may be supportive for some for. Alzheimer's, I mean, I'm sorry, Parkinson's disease, as well as Alzheimer's disease. Yeah. Right, listen, you got research starts somewhere. It starts in a lab, moves to some animal models. From there, if it if it if it if it looks like it may be, be real, moves into humans. So at this point, can't really say much, but maybe <laughs> I don't know. we'll just um, we'll just leave it there. Um, OK, so other um, things that we're finding online are, are often like, how do I take this stuff? What's the best oh, way to yes, do this? Yes, yes. Um, one big question is, can I can I take seaweed or sea moss, whatever you're talking about, every day? Yeah, well, so it's not something where it's required. It's a food. So it's almost like saying, can I drink milk every day? Or can I eat broccoli every day yeah, or carrots kind of, every it's day? It's the same question. Yeah. Yes. Um, Yes, you can. It's it's a food that we are not consuming enough of. So why not add it in? It's to, a veggie to your diet. Yeah, it's May a veggie. I wouldn't go overboard. I I think I think a great way to think of it is it's it just let's it's just a veggie. It's another vegetable source. And guess what? We need to eat more veggies. At the end of the day, mm -hmm. right? Land and sea. Yeah. Um. So I think you're right there. Um, how do I take seaweed? I guess that question is people are, may, I, I think, is this more about like supplement forms, teas, maybe yes. stuff like that? You see them uh, dried and, and presented in a powder form. Um, and yes, you can find them in powders and capsules and mixing together and in drinks hey. as, as a, as a supplement. And yes. So hey, that's for, it's my, it's a Texas buddy. Oh. Well, I don't actually, I don't know who is it. It's Bertha. I don't know Bertha, but she's from Texas. I'm from yes. Texas. Sea moss is a food, a veggie. Wow. Yes, Bertha. You are absolutely right. And, and so you can consider it that way. Um, and we do have vegetable extracts and veggie, mm -hmm. like dried veggie preparations. One comment that I would say is you want to make sure it's a good quality source. I can't say that enough. Right, right. Um, because where are they harvesting the seaweed um, and making sure it's pristine water? Yeah, and it mostly isn't it, um, I think for, well, it depends on what type too, right? Like I think the brown, the kelps, it should be pristine cooler waters, I think if I remember that. Is that? Mm, I'm not sure. I'm am I, make, am I, make, am I making this I, up? I don't know. Let's I don't. I might. I might be. Ma okay. I might be making this up. Let's look back at my notes. But I, I did. I thought I read that some. You know, some are better in colder waters. Some uh, in the warmer, um, less deep water. Mm -hmm. I, I, I saw something about that. So, um, but because I don't know what I'm talking about, I'm gonna stop talking. <laughs> okay. Because I'm not <laughs> seeing that in, in my notes either. But. Uh... Okay. Well, there you go. Hey, sea moss. It's real. 
Why is it real? It's a seaweed. Yes, it is a red type seaweed. Um, loaded with vitamins, minerals, fibers. We went over some specific ones. So give it a shot. Is that is that it right there? Yeah, is that that's it? the sea moss. You can buy it dried. Uh, and you can find an Asian market if you have one in your area. Uh, but now you're finding it already kind of created in these sea moss gels. And I know people oh, cool. that just take a spoonful of gel a day and uh, they feel like it kind of gives them more energy. Maybe boost. that nice. iodine, the nice. thyroid support. That's so, probably what it is. Yeah, yeah probably what I think it that's is. it. All right. Hey, thanks for joining us today. A lot of great information, right? Yes, yes. Um, um, so thank you for joining us. We have actually a uh, what's called a wellness blog from Life Extension. Mm -hmm. If you go to lifeextension.com slash CMOS, there it is. Check yeah. that out. Again, the blogs go over a, a lot more of the information, some mm -hmm. of the research um, that we, that we may touch on a little bit. Mm -hmm. The blog will will go into it a, a little bit deeper. So that's lifeextension.com slash CMOS. And don't forget, we go live every Wednesday at 12 noon Eastern time. Uh, don't forget to like, share, comment, comment subscribe. Hit the interest in, watching. ring the bell, hit the ding dong. Whatever you got to do so you, so you always know when we're about to go live. I'm Dr. Mike, and that is Dr. Crystal. Thanks for watching.